In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to program a wall follower on Python. This here is a left-hand wall follower, and it doesn't use an omniscient view of the whole maze like Dijkstra's algorithm in my previous video. It also doesn't use heuristics, as it just missed the end there in the bottom right. And it also is a very inefficient algorithm, but on the other hand, it's very simple. And today, we're going to be looking at the code I wrote for it, and a little bit of the backstory about how I programmed it. So here's the code I wrote for the maze generating algorithm in the previous video. It's exactly the same, it just produces a 3D array of all the walls. And there's the function to print it. But this is the new stuff here, the wall following function. And we're going to look a bit deeper into this code a bit later. But the link is in the description if you would like to look at it. Now I'm going to look a, a little bit closer into the algorithm and how it works. So the wall following algorithm works on pretty much every maze, but there are a few exceptions. So all it does is follow the left or the right wall. So if you follow the left wall around this maze, you'll eventually get to the finish at B. But it obviously is not the quickest route. But when you've got a robot in a maze, you can't really help going the wrong way sometimes, as you don't know where the end is. When a robot gets to a cell, it needs to determine the correct direction to turn. For a human, this is obviously really easy to do, as you just follow the wall. But there's a set of rules I basically outlined um, to decide which way to go. The first thing it does is it checks for the presence of a left wall on the left of the robot. Now if that isn't a wall, so this last bit there would be zero if there wasn't a wall, it's going to turn left. If there is a wall and it's one, it needs to check the front wall. If there's no wall in front of it, it's not going to turn anything and it's just going to move forwards. Now if there is a wall on the front and the left, like here, it'll check the right wall. If that bit there is one, and there's a wall, it will turn around because there's nowhere to go. But if it's zero and there's no wall, it's just going to turn right. And once it's moved or not turned, it always is going to go to the next cell. And then in the program, the direction and position of the robot is updated and the system repeats until it gets to the end. Now, here's an example of a maze that a left-hand wall follower cannot solve. So say starting in A, we go around it, following the left-hand wall, and we've missed the end and we're back to A. So it just keeps repeating on and on through the maze. Now because there's an island here that's not connected to the outer wall, it's never going to go into the inner bit there. So this is a flaw of the wall following algorithm, but with a depth first search algorithm to create the walls, like in my previous video, you'll never get a scenario like this as the walls will always be connected to each other. And obviously if if the destination is on, on the side or in a corner, it's always going to find it anyway because that wall is connected to the starting wall. So now I'm going to quickly run through the code I wrote for the algorithm. So this is the wall following function here, and firstly all the turtle settings are set to what I want them to be. The position is set to 0, 0, which is the bottom left hand corner. Heading is set to 1, which is north, where 0 is west, 2 is east, and 3 is south. So the while function here is basically saying, do the algorithm until we get to the bottom right hand corner. And the first function I made for this is heading adjust. And basically what it does is the robot isn't always pointing in the north direction, but that's how the walls are stored. So it takes in the direction and adjusts the walls so it's in the direction it's heading. So it turns the 4-bit binary value and the walls can be read from that. And it decides which way to go using the technique I talked about earlier. The second set of if functions here is just to adjust the heading so it's between 0 and 3 because there's a plus 2 and minus 1 here. And the algorithm only really un 
understands heading being between 0 and 3. Now it adjusts its position in the maze and the turtle moves forward. This is the code for the heading adjust function. All it does is create a new 4 bit binary array and it does this by firstly appending the old one onto itself and it takes the right takes the values it wants to regarding its heading. This is the main function and all it does is print the maze and generate the maze using the algorithm I created in a previous video and follows the wall. So to give you a quick example, here's another maze that's just been generated. And now it solves it. So for some mazes it can be quite lengthy due to an inefficiency of the algorithm. In an upcoming video I'm going to be looking at Tremo's algorithm which is slightly more efficient than this because it records where it's been and it also can rely on randomness. But now I'm going to leave you with this maze being solved and I hope you like the video and like and subscribe and thank you for watching.